Congratulations to all kindergarten students moving into first grade. I'm so excited to celebrate this special occasion with you all. And I'm so grateful that we had the opportunity to worship together every Sunday. And I'm so blessed to have gotten to know each and every one of you. I wish you the best of luck in first grade, and I hope to see you again soon. Congratulations again, bye. Hi, new first graders. I loved having every single one of you in my class. I loved it when you volunteered to pray, or when I saw you help each other, or when I saw you being nice and kind to a newcomer. And first grade is gonna be different. Upper elementary is going to be different, but you guys are gonna do great. Know that I love you and so many people in this church love you. So congratulations, woohoo! Hello, I'm Ashton. I am going to graduate in first grade. I'm so excited. Teacher April, thank you for teaching about Jesus and the Bible. Hi, my name is Emma and I'm graduating from kindergarten and I'm going to first grade. My name is Evan and I'm graduating from kindergarten, moving up to first grade. I want to thank teacher Sandra for being kind and teacher April for teaching us the Bible story lesson. My favorite memory about church is learning the Bible story and praise time. My name is Adeline and I'm graduating from kindergarten and moving up to first grade. I want to thank all the teachers, but especially Nicole teacher for showing me how to praise God. Hello, my name is Evelyn Bay and I'm graduating from kindergarten and I'm going to first grade. I learned in church that God is always with you. Thank my church friends because they are very nice and kind. Say that. Hello, my name is Michael Clark and I'm graduating from kindergarten. Church. I like to praise at church. And I want to thank who? I want to thank my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. My name is Noah and I'm graduating from kindergarten and moving up to first grade. I want to thank Priscilla teacher for teaching me about the Bible. I like learning about how Jesus healed 10 men. Hello, I'm Arden Pei and I'm graduating from first grade, kindergarten to first, up to first grade. A fun memory is when we got to stand up on the stage and sing for our parents. I will thank my teachers because I will miss them very much. Hello, my name is Derek and I am graduating from kindergarten and moving up to first grade. I would like to thank my family and friends for supporting me. A fun memory about church is when I got to eat donuts and play with my friends after service. My name is Eleanor Lee. I graduated kindergarten and now I'm going to first grade. I want to thank Teacher April for being my teacher and teaching me about Jesus. And hello, my name is Ever. I'm graduating kindergarten to first grade. Thank you for my six years teachers. Hi, my name is Grant. I'm graduating to kindergarten. Moving up to fourth grade. I want to thank Sandra teacher and April teacher right. for teaching me. My name is Liam Lee. I graduated kindergarten. I'll be in first grade soon. I want to say thank you to all of you, the pastors, the teachers, and my friends for teaching me about Jesus. I missed you very much. Bye. Hi, CCSC fifth graders. Congratulations, you did it.
you completed another educational milestone. I'm really proud of you guys. I want to wish you guys all the best as you move on to youth group. You're in good hands, and I really do hope and pray that you would continue to seek him and all you do, and that your relationship with him uh, would continue to grow and grow. I hope that you guys are doing well. Um, all of you guys are safe, and I really do miss you guys. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Hello to all my fifth graders and a huge congratulations to you guys for finishing up the school year. Um, I know I will miss having you guys in the class, but I also know that you guys will be in great hands for you group. I wanted to thank all the church teachers for letting me know more about God. Thank you for everything that you guys did for me and I really appreciate it. Thank you. My name is Jordan and I'll be graduating from fifth grade into youth group. I want to thank my teachers and past Eric for always being nice to me and praying for me. My favorite memory from children's ministry is when Pastor Eric became a GIF on Instagram. Thank you teacher. Congratulations to all kindergarten students moving into first grade. I'm so excited to celebrate this special occasion with you all. And I'm so grateful that we had the opportunity to worship together every Sunday. And I'm so blessed to have gotten to know each and every one of you. I wish you the best of luck in first grade and I hope to see you again soon. Congratulations again, bye. Hi new first graders. I loved having every single one of you in my class. I loved it when you volunteered to pray, or when I saw you help each other, or when I saw you being nice and kind to a newcomer. And first grade is gonna be different, upper elementary is going to be different, but you guys are gonna do great. Know that I love you and so many people in this church love you. So congratulations, woohoo! Hello, I'm Ashton, I am going to graduate from fifth grade into first grade. Teacher April, thank you for teaching about Jesus and the Bible. Hey, my name is Emma and I'm graduating from kindergarten and I'm going to first grade. My name is Evan and I'm graduating from kindergarten, moving up to first grade. I want to thank teacher Sandra for being kind and teacher April for teaching us the Bible story lesson. My favorite memory about church is learning the Bible story and praise time. My name is Adeline and I'm graduating from kindergarten and moving up to first grade. I want to thank all the teachers, but especially Nicole teacher for showing me how to praise God. Hello, my name is Evelyn Bay and I'm graduating from kindergarten and I'm going to first grade. I learned in church that God is always with you. Thank my church friends because they are very nice and kind. Say that. Hello, my name is Michael Clark and I'm graduating from kindergarten. Church. I like to play that church. I want to think who? I want to think my mom and dad. Oh, wow. My name is Noah and I'm graduating from kindergarten and moving up to first grade. I want to thank Priscilla teacher for teaching me about the Bible. I like learning about how Jesus healed 10 men. Hello, I'm Arden Pei and I'm graduating from first grade, kindergarten to first, up to first grade. A fun memory is when we got to stand up on the stage and sing for our parents. I will thank my teachers because I will miss them very much. Hello, my name is Derek and I am graduating from kindergarten and moving up to first grade. 
I would like to thank my family and friends for supporting me. A fun memory about church is when I got to eat donuts and play with my friends after service. My name is Elena Lee. I graduated kindergarten. Now I'm going to first grade. I want to thank Teacher April for being my teacher and teaching me about Jesus. Hello, my name is Ever. I'm graduating kindergarten to first grade. Thank you for my success teachers. Hi, my name is Grant. I'm graduating to kindergarten. Moving, moving up to fourth grade. I want to thank Sandra teacher and April teacher Why? for teaching. My name is Liam Lee. I graduated kindergarten. I'll be in first grade soon. I want to say thank you to all of you, the pastors, the teachers, and my friends for teaching me about Jesus. I miss you very much. Bye. Hi CCSC 5th graders, congratulations you did it! You completed another educational milestone. I'm really proud of you guys. I want to wish you guys all the best as you move on to youth group. You're in good hands and I really do hope and pray that you would continue to seek him and all you do and that your relationship with him uh, would continue to grow and grow. I hope that you guys are doing well. Um, all of you guys are safe and I really do miss you guys. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Hello to all my fifth graders and a huge congratulations to you guys for finishing up the school year. Um, I know I will miss having you guys in the class, but I also know that you guys will be in great hands for youth group. I wanted to thank all the church teachers for letting me know more about God. Thank you for everything that you guys did for me and I really appreciate it. Thank you. My name is Jordan and I'll be graduating from fifth grade into youth group. I want to thank my teachers and past Eric for always being nice to me and praying for me. My favorite memory from children's ministry is when Pastor Eric became a GIF on Instagram. Thank you, teacher. Hello. I forgot what I had to say. Hello, welcome to Cry Central. Hi, welcome to Cry Central. Hello, welcome to Cry Central. Hi, welcome to Cry Central. Hello, welcome to Cry Central. Hello, welcome to Cry Central. Hi, welcome to Cry Central. Hello, welcome to Cry Central. Man, I miss them so much. It's so good to see all of our kids who are graduating and moving up to the next ministry. I miss everyone. Yes, it was so good to see all their faces. Hi, CCSC and Christ Central kids, and welcome to those who are visiting and joining our worship for the first time. And also welcome to our Cerritos Presbyterian Church High School graduates who are joining us for the first time and will be part of the college ministry. We are excited to have you join us today. My name is Eric Cho, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director at the Fullerton Campus. And my name is Priscilla Kwok, and I'm the Preschool Coordinator. We would like to welcome you all to today's graduation joint worship. 
For the first time, we are excited to come together as one church to not only worship together, but to also acknowledge those who are graduating into the next ministry. During infant baptism, we make a promise all together as a church to raise our children with the gospel, and today is a small reflection of that promise. Our hope is that we continue to encourage them to live with Jesus at the center of their lives and to continue to have a deep relationship with God. So we take this opportunity to recognize this transition into the next ministry. To our kindergartners who will be going into elementary, our fifth graders who will be moving up to youth ministry, our CPC seniors who will be joining the college ministry, and our college graduates. To the graduating class of 2020, congratulations! We are all so proud of you and so excited to see you grow and shine wherever you go. We also want to acknowledge all of the volunteers, parents, pastors, leaders who help nurture our children and students as they walk with Christ. So thank you. Thank you for your love and your commitment to the church and to our children. And for today's worship, as difficult as it might be, we hope our families are able to have Sunday worship together with your children. We have incorporated elements of our family worship into today's service so that it will be enjoyable for the whole family. And last but not least, we want to bring glory to God and give Him thanks for our church and for each other. Let's enjoy Him today as we worship Him and we celebrate this joyous occasion. Good morning and welcome to our online worship service. My name is David Chin and I'm the youth director here at Christ Central. And our call to worship comes from Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. Here's what it says. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. As God calls us to worship this morning, let us be reminded of how he is faithful to us, even when we are faithless. Truly, he is worthy of our praise. Let's sing to our God with joyful hearts. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online service. My name is James. I'm one of the worship leaders here. And this is Nicole Kim. She's our children's ministries worship leader. And so please join us as we sing songs of praise to our God. There's no space. There's no space that is the can There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me with your arms spread. Take me like an orphan child. Never let go, never leave. I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on. I am. There's no space. There's no space that is love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me with your arms spread wide. Take me like an orphan child. Never let go, never leave my side. I am holding on to you. I am. First John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, 
and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every week we have a confession of sin in which we come before God and acknowledge our wrongdoings. Confession is not only an act of repentance where we turn away from sin, but it's also an act of faith, trusting in Christ and his promise to forgive us. Let's take the time now in silent prayer to acknowledge our sins before our God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says this, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. It's good to remind ourselves that we don't confess our sins to be forgiven, but we confess our sins knowing we are forgiven because of what Jesus has done. Sometimes we may not feel forgiven. Sometimes our sins can weigh down on us and make us feel hopeless. But I'm here to remind you today that our forgiveness is not based on how we feel, but only on the blood of Christ. I want to remind you today that in Christ, you are forgiven and made whole. In light of this assurance, let us respond in worship.
Good morning, Christ Central. I'm Andrew, and I'm one of the pastors here. It's my honor to bring to us God's word on this special Sunday. But before we jump in, the children's director, Eric Cho, is going to be reading the Bible verse for us today. So take it away, Eric. Today's passage comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. At this time, please take out your Bibles. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read this together. So please follow along as I read Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. This is God's word. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I learn the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All right, thank you so much, Eric. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you so much to celebrate on this day the graduation of some, the transitions of many others. And Lord, as we think about the many changes that are going to take place in our lives, Lord, would you help us to see them the way you see them? Help us to learn through all of the changes that will be to come. And would you speak to us today as we open up your word? In Jesus' name, amen. If 2020 has taught us anything it's that nothing is quite as certain as change, right? We're constantly living in a world where things are changing, whether big changes or small changes, right? We're always experiencing new normals. And today in our passage, we're going to learn about how we can manage and deal with change. Verse 13 of our passage is one of the most misunderstood Bible verses of all time the MVP of misunderstood Bible verses. And it's often used only for good change when people think about the good things that are going to happen. Right? We think about sports when there's pro athletes before a big game and they, they're getting into the finals match and you have someone in the locker room bust out this verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can win this game. We're going to win this game. We're going to bring home the gold through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, if you look on Instagram, uh, the most popular hashtag for Philippians 4.13 is a picture of exercise and fitness goals. Right? People usually use this to say, trying to lose weight, trying to lose 20 pounds, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or trying to lift 500 pounds, oh, I can do that through Christ who strengthens me. We usually use this and think about the things that are positive, the things that we're, we're going to do, but we don't really use this verse when we think about when things change for the worse. What if things don't go as well? And isn't that why change is so, uh, so scary? It makes us afraid because we're not so sure if things will actually get better or if things just might get worse. I know a lot of you students who are moving up a year today, maybe you're going to a new school. When I was your age, making the change from elementary school to middle school, I was so afraid. And I remember wondering, am I gonna be able to make new friends? Are they gonna like me? What if people don't like me? Or even with grades, it's gonna be harder. Am I gonna be able to get good grades? Or is it gonna be just so hard and I'm not gonna do very well? And we're worried, we're fearful, we're anxious. We don't know what's going to happen. And this isn't just for students, right? It's for all of us. When we think about parenting, right? I'm sure coronavirus parenting during this time has changed. Whether for better or for worse, you know. For some of us, our marriages, the time we spend together. Others of us change in employment status. Maybe your business or even your lack of work, maybe change in health, change in your well-being, 
Change in where you live. Change in adjusting and living without a loved one or maybe a breakup. Or even changes in our community, in society as a whole. And I know 2020 is an election year, so I'm sure so many of us are also thinking, what are the changes that are going to be on the other side of that? Right? And that's why change is so scary, it's so uncomfortable and so unfamiliar because sometimes we wonder, what if things get worse? How do we deal with it? How do we manage and handle it? The opposite of fear, anxiety, and worry in many ways is peace and contentment. So how do we get that? That's what we want to look at today. What's the secret of contentment and how can we find contentment in change? Well, the secret of contentment, just right off the bat, I'm going to lay it out and then we're going to unpack it. The secret of contentment is to have the right expectations interpret our changing experiences. It's to have the right expectations for the changes that are going to come in our lives. Right in our passage today, Paul is writing to the Philippian church. And this is a church that is one of the only churches in the beginning of his ministry that is supporting him that is so concerned and they're giving to him and they're partnering with him and they're doing whatever they can to help him. And so as Paul is is raising funds, trying to do ministry, the Philippian church uh, is, is helping him to do that. And so he thanks them. He thanks them for their concern and their gift, but he also uses this as a teaching opportunity to see how he's thinking about change. And for us, he's going to teach us how we also can deal with change. You see, verse 11 to 12 in our passage, it reads, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need. I want you to notice that Paul says he's learned, right? He's learned to be content. It's not natural. It's not something that you just have, but it's something that you and I learn. And how did he learn? How did he learn? Paul learns by getting his expectations from God's word. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16, we have this passage about Paul explaining how we are supposed to be lights in this world. How do we be Christians, who we were meant to be in this world? And he says, we do that by verse 16, holding fast to the word of life. Holding fast. We have to hold fast to God's word, meaning you got to know it. You've got to be in it. It's got to be affecting you. God's word. Now we can't get into all of these expectations in one sermon, right? That's, that's going to take a long time. There's a lot in here that helps us to deal with change, but I just want to share one main thing, one main takeaway for us today. And it has to do with purpose, right? If I asked you, I want you to think about this. What is your primary purpose in life? What's your main goal? And not just maybe what you would say, but how you're living now, what do you think is your main goal in life? I think for some of us, it might be to be happy, right? We want to be happy. For others of us, maybe we want to just make the world a better place. But could I ask you to consider that maybe that's not God's main purpose for you. It's not God's main purpose for me. More than making the world a better place, God is concerned with making us better people. And more than our happiness, what matters to God is our holiness. Our primary goal is not happiness, but it's holiness. Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, the first part of that verse, he makes this so clear. If you ever had any wonders, what is the will of God for my life? It's so clear. For this is the will of God your sanctification. Basically, you being like Jesus is God's plan for your life. That is his main priority in your life. 
And when this is our goal, then changes that we don't like so much, instead of becoming an inconvenience, can become an opportunity. And they become an opportunity for us to grow, to become more like Jesus. You see, Paul went through a lot of what can be seen as inconveniences. He says, I know how to be brought low, and boy, did he know how to be brought low. In 2 Corinthians 11, there's a long list, and this is some of it, of what Paul's been through. He says he's been put in prison, in jail. He's been beaten up, often almost near death, whipped, stoned, shipwrecked, all sorts of other dangers. He says he has had sleepless nights. He was hungry. He was thirsty, without food and cold. Right? That, that's a lot. And, and to top it off, there's even moments where Paul says he's despaired of even life itself. And this is sort of suicidal language saying, God, life is so hard right now. I'd rather not live. I'd rather not be here. I'd rather be with you. I don't want to keep going through this. But I also imagine that maybe Paul in these moments, what kept him going was verse 13 of Philippians 4. God, this is so hard right now, but I can do all things. I can even do this through Christ who strengthens me. And even now, Paul in Philippians 4, he's writing from prison. Right, the last place any of us would want to be. And he's even saying in that there, that I can even be in prison for the gospel because of Christ who strengthens me. I hope that we can say this too. I think a lot of us during the season of COVID-19, it's tough. But I hope we're able to say, I can endure and go through even this time through Christ who strengthens me. I know a lot of our students, uh, Zoom isn't very fun anymore, right? It's, it's getting a lot more tiring and you're maybe sick of it. And maybe you're, you're getting discouraged and bored and unmotivated. But even during that time, I hope that we can say, I can even do this. I can even keep on studying and working through Zoom because of Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. For those of you who are struggling with your health, our staff, we've been praying for you. And a lot of, uh, there have been a number of people who've gotten cancer. And I can't say, I know I can imagine what that's like. But even in the midst of that, I pray that we would be able to get to a place, you would be able to get to a place to say even this, even battling cancer, that we can even do this through Christ who strengthens us. One example for myself, as I think about this, uh, during the coronavirus, as we're quarantined at home, uh, if you're married, you know this can be a stressful, stretching time for some. And Michelle and I, we had one really big argument during uh, this time, and and, and it was was tough. And, you know, when you're fighting, sometimes you got to fight it out, right? You're just not listening to each other until... You're all exhausted and finally you're listening and you're talking and we were sharing, you know, is it supposed to be this hard? Right? It's been three years already that we've been married and we wondered, is it, doesn't it get easier than this? And for us in that moment, I was thinking if marriage was just about happiness, then it's easy to just hate these moments, that there's no reason, there's no purpose, no point for these hard moments. But what if marriage is about something more? And in that moment, I think for both of us, we realized, hey, it's worth it because I think God's doing something here and he's making us holy. That marriage isn't just about being happy, it's about being holy. And so even this hard time of fighting, it's worth it. And I can do this. I can even go through this through Christ who strengthens me. Whether it's times of plenty or want, And of course, on the flip side, Paul also talks about maybe this is a good season for you. Things change for the better. You're abounding. Would you not get too arrogant? Would you not take it for granted? But whether you have plenty or whether you lack, whether you're hungry or whether you're fed, would you be able to go through it all because of Christ who strengthens you? Now, it's easy to just say something like this, like, oh, it'll be okay. But how often do we believe that? 
right? If someone just said, don't worry, it'll be okay. Don't worry, just expect things to turn out better. I'm sure a lot of us have been on that side, hearing that, thinking, what do you know? Like, who are you to tell me that? And it has everything to do with how much we trust that person, right? If we don't have trust with the person telling us what to expect, then we're not going to believe them. And the same thing applies here. Now, we could tell you this, but if you don't know and you don't trust in the God who is telling us what to expect, you won't believe it. You won't live it out. You can't avoid change, but you can change how you think about it. And that only happens when you get the gospel and the gospel changes you. You see, Paul can deal with change because he trusts the God who doesn't change. For a lot of us, we're the most calm and at peace and content when we feel like we're in control, right? And when we aren't and things change, that's when we start to get afraid. That's when our anxiety increases, when our sense of control decreases. But while we might not run the world, we can run to God and he runs the world and he's in control in the midst of change. And as trust in him increases, our anxieties and our fears, what we're afraid of decreases. Trust in the one who gives us what to expect in his word. And how do you know this? How do you know this? You can know this because when we were in our sin, not deserving God's pleasure or his grace, when the change that was coming to us was going to be none other than his wrath, that change on the other side of this life was going to be hell. God decided to do something about it. And he would send Jesus to forgive us our past, present, and our future sins, all of it, so that if he stands in our place, the perfect one, the perfectly righteous son, then God sees us as perfect and how he sees us will never change. Our status before God will never change and our future with God, oh, that joyous future when things are gonna be so much better in eternity, when our future with God, that'll never change either. You see, in a world of constant change, the secret of contentment is to trust the God who doesn't change, but whose love will change you. It'll change you to become more like Jesus, to be more forgiving, more kind, more compassionate, more loving, even more trusting in him. And so for us practically, what this means, how we can grow in our understanding of contentment, just these two things. First, to learn from God's word. And second, to learn from God's people. So first, to learn from God's word, we talked about how earlier in Philippians 2, that we need to be holding on to God's word, holding on tightly. Right, holding his word near and dear to our hearts. How are you doing with that today? I'm sure for many of us, it's, it's challenging. But it's something we need to be clinging on to. A Christian hip-hop artist Lecrae says this, quote, The less time you spend with the truth, the more you'll believe lies. Right, the less time you spend with the truth, the more time you're going to spend believing other voices that aren't true, that are giving you wrong expectations. And so we need to be in God's word consistently and regularly. And if you're spending a whole lot more time doing other things, if you're spending all your time playing games and, and watching the news or uh, on Netflix or social media, then I think we need to at least ask the question, are you being Discipled, are you learning from Jesus or are you learning from those other things? I think we need to at least ask us what is shaping our expectations? We have our summer Bible survey club that has just started. 
It's not too late to join, but I highly encourage you, if you're free Thursday night, please, uh, Thursday nights, please join us. We would love to have you there. We also have our summer Bible reading plan that's launching, a 61-day challenge. Would you join us for that too? Let's be in the word together, learning from God's word. Second, learning from God's people. And I think a lot of us, it's easy to say, yeah, I know, I have friends at church or I know the people I talk to, but I wanna challenge you to, to move towards not just those that you agree with, but the, the people that are different from you. Remember, life isn't about our happiness or our comfort primarily, but it's about our holiness. And as we celebrate today, the next generation, right, moving up, transitioning them, another grade, another class, right, another life stage, it's on us, especially those of us who are older, it's on us to commit to their holiness, to our holiness together, to our change, that we're changing to become more like Jesus. For our college ministry, one thing that we did this past year, uh, we have our college small groups. Small groups are, are already ended. But one of the things we did is say, seniors, you have to join uh, just a Christ Central small group, not a college small group, but a Christ Central small group, a mixed small group. And part of our hope for that is to know that after college, as you enter a new life stage, we want you to be ready because things are going to change and be different. And we want you to have the right expectations. And a lot of times that's best when you have people around you that are already there. We have this one brother. I'm so thankful for him. He joined a, a small group of mainly married men. He's the youngest of that group. Some of them have kids. And at first he was wondering, man, am I going to fit in here? I'm the youngest. I probably have nothing to talk about. But he stuck it out. And he loves that small group. He loves what he's learning, the things that he gets to see about what life looks like when you're married or when you have kids. And it's helping him to, to shape his expectations and to be ready to see things biblically when he's there. So I want to encourage you, be uncomfortable, be willing to be uncomfortable and get to know people different from you and to learn from them. If we don't do that, if we don't move towards one another, especially across generations, if we don't build those bridges, then we might lose one along the way. To conclude our time, I pray that today you learn the secret to being content. Paul in Colossians 1.26 talks about the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to you. That's the gospel. That's God's word. And you have it. I want to end with this quote by G.K. Chesterton. He says, An adventure is only an inconvenience rightly understood. An inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly understood. For all of us, especially those of us who are moving on into a new life stage, would you embrace all of those changes? Welcome to a new season of your adventure in holiness, of your adventure in becoming more like Jesus. Let's pray together. And to pray together as we close out our time, would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Ready, begin. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
2020. Pastor Harold here and I celebrate this day along with your parents and your families, teachers and friends. I know this must have been and has been a difficult unusual season where you're missing your friends or your teachers in person at school. Hopefully you really miss being together with your church at CCSC. I certainly miss you. I can't wait for that day to come. And we can worship and sing and eat and have Bible studies and hang out together close to one another. Uh, but on this graduation Sunday, it does not less lessen how meaningful and how many reasons we have to worship God for his faithfulness and love and certainly his grace, his grace upon you and upon the life of our church. Uh, allow me to just share two verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. 
which has guided and strengthened me through much of my life. It reads, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge God, and he will make straight your paths. As you get older, one more year, of course, you're going to get smarter, you might get bigger, stronger, and you're going to learn to become more independent. Kind of trust your judgment, trust your instinct sometimes. A lot of times that's very good and healthy. But in your relationship with God, and the way you get into relationship with God is by trusting Jesus, not yourself. The way that you grow in your relationship with God is not by becoming more independent, but but by becoming more dependent, more reliant. So it's almost kind of backwards the way that you grow, grow up, and learn to become your own man or woman. Uh, As a Christian, in your relationship with God as our Father, because He gave up His own Son to take away all of our sins and to come into our lives to love us and lead us for the rest of our lives, The way that you grow up in this relationship with Him and the way that He keeps and recovers you, making straight all your paths, is by not leaning on your own understanding. So lean on your own understanding less, but learn to trust upon and trust in the Lord more. Christ Central, receive now the blessing from God from Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Ready? Hi! My name is Michelle Yang. I'm the nursery coordinator here at Christ Central. And this is Mabel and Karis Yang. Hello! Thank you for joining our online worship service today. We are so glad that you are able to join us for our very first graduation family worship service. So, first off, we want to say congratulations! to all of our graduates. It's crazy how all of our kids have grown so much during this time. I definitely miss seeing all of our cutie pie babies and families every week. And although we are still not able to see each other in person, we are thankful that you are able to join us for worship online today. If you're new, we would love to connect with you. You can go to ChristCentralSC.com forward slash connect card and fill out your information so we can reach out to you and welcome you. For every connect card that we receive, Christ Central will donate $10 to a local charity of your choice. When you're filling out the connect card, you can choose from a list of charities. So, if it's your first time checking us out today, go fill out a card. In terms of offering, you can give online by going to ChristCentralSC.com forward slash giving or by texting 84321. You can also mail in a check to our church office if you prefer to do so. So, today we have two announcements. Our first announcement is our monthly prayer meeting. As we continue to connect virtually, join us for our monthly prayer meeting online on Friday, July 3rd at 8 p.m. on our YouTube channel. We know that many of you are going through a lot during these tough times and are in need of prayer and support. In times like these, I personally am so thankful for our community and resources provided here at Christ Central. If you're in need of prayer or support during this time, please let us know by reaching out to any pastor, any elder, or staff member. You can also submit your prayer requests on ChristCentralSC.com forward slash prayer or by emailing office at ChristCentralSC.com. Our second announcement is our mid-year congregational meeting. 
Christ Central's mid-year congregational meeting is on July 19th at 1 p.m. The meeting will be held virtually and all members will be invited to join online. Important church updates and matters will be discussed and shared by the session. More important information will follow, so please save the date, July 19th. For additional announcements, including the latest updates for our church regarding COVID-19, please visit our website, ChristCentralSC.com. You can also sign up for our weekly e-newsletter and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify. Although we've had to make many, many, many adjustments given the current situation, let's make every effort to stay connected with one another by checking in and praying for each other. We hope that you have a great week and come back to join us again for another worship service next Sunday. Have a great week. God bless. Bye.